there, it's Stephanie from SixFiguresUnder.com. I am here with my husband, Mike, and we are going to share with you our October 2020 budget. We've been sharing our family's budget transparently online since 2013, I think now. So it's been about seven years that we've been sharing everything about our family's finances. We do it to help people like you learn how to budget and see how we navigate all of this personal finance stuff. And this month we actually have some really good examples of that as we had some unexpected expenses come up and I want to talk you through how we handled that. So we'll get right in on the numbers. We start with the spending in October, which is what we earned back in September. We're a month ahead on our finances, so we put everything, as it were, in a jar. It's just sitting in a checking account, actually, that we earn as we earn it during the month. And the next month, we open up the jar, and we start spending, and that's what we have to spend during that month. Oh, it makes it so nice to know right at the beginning of the month exactly how much money we have to spend. We've already got it there. We're not waiting for a paycheck or hoping we'll earn that amount of money. It's so nice to start out knowing what we're going to budget with. It's not just a money nerd thing. Well, maybe it's just a money nerd thing, but... But uh, but it's really kind of life-changing. So we'll start with our spending. The first thing we spend is giving first. So our tithing is 10% of our income. That's nine fifty-eight, based on the income we earned in September. Every, each month we also uh, fast offering of $100, which is to help the local poor in our area. We are really blessed, and we want to share a little of that. Okay, I'll go in on with our monthly bills. Okay, our mortgage. This is a 15-year mortgage on our house. We pay $2,836 a month for our mortgage. We're, we're putting extra toward this, but we have that down in a, another category I'll show you in a minute. Our electricity, $239. This is nice that it's fall now, so this, this amount is going down. Our house is completely electric, so no gas or propane. And we also have a rental on our property that's on the same meter. Our car insurance, $89 a month. We only have one car registered right now. When COVID happened and Mike was working at home indefinitely, we took the other car off of insurance and unregistered it to save some money. Internet, $70 a month. Money well spent these days. Okay, water, we estimate what half of our water bill will be. I'm hoping that this is a little on the high side. Our last water bill was $300, which is the highest it's ever been now that we have our big garden. Hopefully our next one won't be 300, but we set 150 aside for that so far. Trash is $40 a month. Our trash bill went up to $80 every other month. Cell phones, $25 each for two cell phones. These phones are still fairly new to us. A couple of months ago, we switched from Republic Wireless, uh, which didn't actually have reception in our home, to Visible, which is a Verizon-owned subsidiary and uses the Verizon 4G LTE network and does have not great, but at least minimal reception at home so that when the power's out and we don't have Wi-Fi, uh, we can still reach out into the world with our cell phones. Which is important because we live in California fire uh, territory, so our power goes off regularly. If you go to Visible.com, you'll actually see the deal that we're on, which which is always available. It looks like it's $40 a month for unlimited 4G LTE uh, data, but it's actually 25 because as long as you join a group of three other people, uh, everybody gets a discount. It's kind of like the old family plan idea, and it takes five minutes to find a group and join, so it's worth it to get it for $25 a month instead of $40 a month. You can just Google visible party pay, and you'll probably find a Reddit thread that uh, lets you sign up for a group really quickly. Okay, piano, we pay $120 a month for piano tuition for our oldest. We have a voice over IP phone through UMA, and that's $5 a month. The orthodontist for our oldest is $61 a month, and we'll have that for another year, I think. Disability insurance is $151 a month. That covers, for me, if, I, if I'm unable to work as an attorney, it covers about $65,000 a year for the rest of my life. Um, which is nice because right now, really our biggest financial assets are income potential, and that protects some of that. So moving on to our everyday expenses, uh, we try to keep our food budget around $500. We actually came in a little bit under this month. We've been over the last few months as we've been stocking up a lot on some great deals and just stocking up. <laughs> so it's nice to have it lower now. 
Uh, household miscellaneous. This is one of those surprise expenses. Our boys were running around on the hill behind our house. There's quite a bit of property back there, and they found this lush green area with beautiful grass, which is strange because everything in California has been brown for the last four months. And so they came to get me, and uh, and I found that there was a uh, in the water line that's between our meter and our home. There was an underground valve that had failed and we were watering some piece of the hill and it was beautiful and we have no idea how long it's been watering but <laughs> long enough at least for the grass to grow again. And the deer all found it. There was a, there was a, a deer trail going a by. They were using that as their watering hole. So we had a plumber come in. That was $600 of unexpected expense but we didn't want to keep watering the hillside. It's not an area we usually go because it's so far away from the house but uh, I'm glad that the boys found it when they did at least. Yeah, so maybe that's why the water bill has been higher. Who knows how long that's been going on, but it'll be good to have that water usage go down. And we we didn't actually have, you'll notice that it, it shows that we budgeted $661 and we spent $661. At the beginning of the month, we didn't put $661 in there. That's not how the budget works. We, we put I think I had we, 200 or 300, you know, something that we normally spend. So, so we put what we expected in there and then this happened and that's life. It happens sometimes. And so we had to find some category we could take that money from. The, the key to a budget isn't sticking by your, your guess at the beginning of the month. It's, it's rolling with uh, the punches of life and, and figuring out how you can stay within budget by maneuvering money uh, within categories of your budget. So you'll see below when we talk about sinking funds that we didn't fund a lot of our sinking funds. That's, that was to find this, this extra money so we could meet the $600. This also happened maybe, I don't know, a week or two into the into the month, and so we hadn't spent a lot on food, so that that really encouraged me to rein in the, the food spending and um, not get a lot of extra things because I knew we had this big $600 plumber bill. All right, fuel is next. It's great to spend less than $100 on gas. We don't drive around very much, so we don't spend a lot on gas. It's fantastic. We had a few things we purchased for clothing, uh, a couple of children's place orders, I think. Animals, we didn't spend anything uh, last month on animals, so we had to buy chicken food and cat food and dog food this month. We should have enough through this month and maybe into the next month as well. Kids' activities, nothing. We had lots of activities, but they didn't cost money. Allowances, this is what we set for our kids to have some money that they can learn to make money management decisions with, kind of on a small scale before they are grown-ups and have a paycheck, and hopefully they can learn to use money wisely so that they're ready when uh, when the decisions matter more. And we didn't spend anything in the homeschool category. Okay, our sinking funds. We put $400, this is normal, what we put in medical and dental. We spent about $520 on medical bills that came in, and we have 2400 remaining, and that's actually going to disappear in November because we have a, a big bill coming up, and that'll pretty much be it for the year. Car repair, we usually put $300. We've got almost $4,000 in that category. We're just kind of we're just letting that run for now. We don't drive the car much, and we don't have to fix it very often, so we did spend $45 on the oil change for the van this month, but we're not contributing anything to that fund. Christmas, we put $100 a month toward that. This month, we spent $300, so we have $580 left for Christmas. Our life insurance, we put aside $75 a month, and the premiums come due in November, and we actually only needed $39 more to to meet what the premium was. Gifts category, we didn't put anything. We spent about $11. Car registration and smog, we didn't put anything. We didn't put anything in the family fun fund. And the car fund. So for a while we were contributing $5.50 a month toward a fund where we were going to buy Mike a good commuter car but then he stopped commuting altogether. So we're kind of putting this on pause while we have things that we actually need to spend money on now. Which, this month, we wanted to get some more garden beds for our, our big garden. We want to get that all set up and ready to go for next spring because we we also want to put in fruit trees and do some more fencing and lots of other projects. So we wanted to get the garden beds done. Lumber has gone up a lot. We made our first set of beds for this spring, for this year's garden, uh, out of pressure treated wood. It costs almost 60% more than it did when we bought it last April. 
And it wasn't cheap then. <laughs> yeah, so, so we've been looking to, to see what else we can use. And I found some uh, galvanized steel beds uh, from Northern Tool Company. They were on, on sale. They're not, they're not quite as large as what we've been using, but they cost less than half as much as the wood version. And so we said, you know what, we'll do it. And it was, it was a limited time sale. So we bought some of those, which wasn't, again, something we had planned for. We actually took money from the car fund and put it into the home projects fund to pay for our garden expansion. And that includes uh, 700, almost $700 of, of dirt <laughs> that we had delivered to fill those garden beds. So that's why this money, this $1,200 is subtracted from the car fund and we put it toward the home projects, which these are all garden expenses. I was going to put some toward preparedness, you know, stocking up on things, but when that plumber issue came up, I took the money out of there and put it toward the plumber bill. Investing is pretty simple. We, we put a $25 per month per child uh, into a 529 at the college savings plan for the kids. Except for the littlest. Except the littlest, <laughs> she doesn't have one yet. And then Stephanie has $500 a month into a Roth IRA so that it fills up her IRA contribution for the year. My employer already takes out a pension contribution for my paycheck. Okay, our tax planning and preparation is $90 a month. We just scheduled our appointment to, to meet with our tax planner for this year. And the last category down here is our mortgage extra. So we did put $1,000, you see, toward extra, toward our mortgage. And we did this right at the beginning of the month when we did our whole budget and made the plan for the whole month. And we put that thousand dollars right there. So we didn't have this available to, you know, put toward the, the plumbing incident or the garden beds, which I'm fine with that we did that right away. But I just wanted to, to mention that that's why we still were able to put money toward our goal, even though we had these other expenses. It's because we did that first. You can see in our little mortgage payoff motivation chart, we're getting this house filled up. This has 365 spaces to color and we are 25, 24, 25% of the way to our goal of paying off our mortgage. I think we're at $274,000 that we still owe on our house. When we originally set this goal two years ago, our goal was to get it paid off in five years. So we're two years into our five-year goal. That's that's 40% of the time that has elapsed, but we're only 24, 25% of the way toward meeting the the goal. So we're we're behind schedule, but we're we're still plugging away. Okay, so this is money that we earned in October and will budget in November. So this is about fourteen hundred dollars from the blog, the the state income, they send it in a bunch of checks, and then a thousand dollars from our rental. So if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave it in the comments. We're happy to answer. Okay, we'll see you next time.